Hello, this video is not a regular book review. It is instead a rather big announcement for the channel. I'm planning to start a course on complex variables, also known as complex analysis. Um, the prerequisite for the course is two semesters worth of calculus. And by that, I mean a regular calculus course that focuses mostly on the computational aspects of calculus. The course does not assume background on proof writing, but we will be doing some proofs as it is unavoidable at this level of mathematics. I'll try to break down the details as much as possible when it comes to proof writing. This is a textbook we'll be following. It's a classic textbook. The plan is to cover the entirety of the book. So we will be starting from the very basics, the complex numbers, and then analytic functions. This is the central object of study in complex analysis. Elementary functions, and then we move on to integrals, or more commonly known as contour integrals. And we'll be talking about series, uh, Taylor series, Laurent series. These are the two main types of series in complex analysis. And once again, if you met the prerequisites, as I mentioned, two semesters worth of calculus, you've probably seen Taylor series already. One of the original motivations was to understand the behavior of power series. I think it was Cauchy who uh, invented much of the materials in our course um, when he was uh, investigating a solution to the Kepler's problem. Talked about it in a few videos before on this channel. And the series solution to the Kepler's problem has a very strange behavior. It only converges for a limited range of eccentricities. It is a highly esoteric problem um, by today's standard, but this is how business of complex analysis or just really modern analysis in general kickstarted. And then we have the residuals and poles. So this is this will be one of the big highlights of the course. You may see on YouTube, um, there are these crazy integral evaluation videos in which the method of residual is an extremely powerful tool for tackling some of the impossible integrals for elementary techniques in calculus courses. Chapter 8 is mapping by elementary functions. We might actually just do chapter 8 right after um, studying chapter 3. Uh, we'll be going through the material at a leisurely place. There's not going to be uh, lectures every day. No, that's impossible. I have other commitments in life. And then um, we have conformal mapping, which is another perspective. Applications of conformal mapping, this is useful in several branches of physics, for example, uh, fluid mechanics, uh, electrostatics, and heat transfer. Chapter 11, the Schwarz-Christoffel transformation. This is a continuation of the topic of conformal mapping. You can see we have some more applications, fluid flow in a channel through a slit. Integral formulas of the Poisson type. Um, once again, this is an application in mathematical physics. All right, so that's the content of the book. Um, typically, a first course on complex analysis offered in universities would cover materials um, all the way to chapter nine, more or less in, in that range. So what we're aiming for is perhaps a little bit higher. I do recommend this book. This is a very classic textbook. It's already in the ninth edition. Um, the only downside is that it is quite expensive. If you can afford it, I do strongly recommend getting your own copy. But if not, um, there, there are cheaper alternatives out there. So the material is quite standard. Um, perhaps go check out some of the Dover books on complex analysis. This is the main textbook. However, I do have a few more references. So this is a magnificent set on complex variables. It is written by the Soviet mathematician uh, Alexei Makushevich. This is obviously the English translation of it. It is extremely thorough and detailed, and some of the topics it covers is, are really hard to find in modern alternatives. So this is part one, and this is part two and three. Uh, for some reason, part two and three are combined into a single volume, which is quite thick. Applications within and outside of mathematics are sprinkled throughout, and there are some highly non-trivial ones. For example, in part one, chapter 10, um, there is a section on Lobachevskian geometry. This is typically known in the West as hyperbolic geometry, the first type of non-Euclidean geometry humanity ever discovered, and Nikolai Lobachevsky was among its inventors. In part two, there is a dedicated chapter on inverse and implicit functions. We'll definitely go over this. Unfortunately, often neglected in university complex analysis courses. You can probably tell already, um, complex variable is a subject that is very close to my heart. 
not just because of its mathematical beauty, but also there's some personal reason behind it. This is a Russian original of the textbook by Markushevich that I just showed you. Um, in Russian, it is called Teoria Analytical Funcie, the theory of analytic functions. So this book was a gift of one of my Russian friends. His name is Zach. He has a YouTube channel called Zach the Russian. He left Russia in protest of the war in Ukraine. But this was a book that he purchased in Georgia, former Soviet Republic of Georgia. And as I said, the level of details covered in this book is just incredible. We will definitely be covering Cauchy's treatment on the Kepler's problem, and here and it is included in Markushevich. Um, this says example three, Kepler's equation. Uh, we derived this a few weeks ago in one of my previous videos. But this infinite series has a mysterious radius of convergence. If the eccentricity is too large, then the series will diverge. Highly unexpected behavior, um, and with the help of complex analysis, it can be explained. This is the eccentricity threshold, 0 0.0027. Nowadays, it is known as the Laplace limit. So yeah, that's the end of today's video. This course I'm making is definitely the largest endeavor I've undertaken on this channel by far. Um, so wish me luck. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.